Welcome to Fusion News. I'm Jeff Peachman. I study plasma physics at the University of Washington. And today I'm going to bring you the latest progress in fusion energy. I have three stories to talk about, so let's get going. One, laser-powered fusion experiment more than doubles its power output. Two, U.S. fires world's most powerful laser ever, 100 times brighter than global power. Three, Reel2Fusion raises $36 million, targeting mid-2030s for commercial fusion energy. And if you stick around until the end, I've got two bonus stories as well. So let's get into our first story. One, laser-powered fusion experiment more than doubles its power output. The National Ignition Facility, or NIST, has been making steady progress, breaking records every year. In 2022, they made history by exceeding scientific break-even for the first time ever. They shot a target with two megajoules of laser energy, and they got out three megajoules of fusion energy. Then, in 2023, they achieved 3.9 megajoules of fusion energy. This increased to five in 2024, and now, in April 2025, NIF achieved a yield of 8.6 megajoules with the same input power. This means that they're producing over four times as much energy as the laser puts in. NIF uses inertial confinement, which means they depend on the inertia of the fuel itself to keep the fuel together long enough to fuse. And since that inertia is very low, that reaction has to happen very, very fast. In fact, the plasma burns for less than a nanosecond. This is done by making a frozen pellet of fusion fuel, which has heavy isotopes of hydrogen. They then coat that frozen pellet in diamond and then put that pellet in a gold cylinder. Then a single laser splits into 192 beams and all of those beams get ampl amplified to high power. Then those beams converge on the target, striking the inside of the gold cylinder that excites the gold, releasing X-rays, and the X-rays converge evenly on the pellet. The outside of the pellet explodes, but the inside implodes, reaching fusion conditions right at the center. Now, as a reminder, I'm referring to scientific break-even, not engineering break-even. For scientific break-even, we draw a box around the target, and we compare the joules of energy produced versus the joules of laser energy that went in. The long-term goal is to reach engineering break-even, where we draw a box around the wall plug and we count the kilowatt hours produced versus consumed. NIF was never designed to achieve engineering break-even. So you're probably wondering, what's the big deal here? Well, these experiments prove that controlled fusion is possible and it allows us to study a burning fusion plasma. That data is useful for almost everyone studying fusion because it can inform our models and simulations for inertial confinement with lasers to magnetic confinement and tokamak and stellarators and lots of other methods. Speaking of powerful lasers, that brings us to our next story. Two, US fires world's most powerful laser ever, 100 times brighter than global power. A new laser at the University of Michigan is the most powerful laser ever. This laser, called Zeus, has an instantaneous power of two petawatts. That's two quadrillion watts. That's a lot. Every power source on Earth added together has less than 20 terawatts of capacity, and this is 100 times higher than that. This means that Zeus can only run for a very short time, about 25 attoseconds. Otherwise, it wouldn't have enough power to run it. So when converted to normal seconds, an attosecond has 18 zeros after the decimal point. Why is that important? Well, the laser can be used to support scientific research in all sorts of things plasmas, astrophysics, quantum physics, material science, biology, and even medicine. So while 25 attoseconds is probably too fast to fuse fusion fuel targets, the technology advances that made this laser possible and the science that it enables should help fusion science a lot. And this awesome new tool was made possible by a $16 million grant from the National Science Foundation. Zeus is a very impressive laser, but it's not the only game in town. Another petawatt laser is being built in the United Kingdom. That laser, called Vulcan, has a laser power of one petawatt. Now that's half of what Zeus can do, but Vulcan can operate for one peak a second. That's 40,000 times longer than Zeus. Both of those lasers will be incredibly useful to scientists, and by extension, fusion energy. Three, real to fusion raises $36 million, targeting mid-2030s for commercial fusion energy. Real to fusion, 
an FIA member located in Madison, Wisconsin, just raised $36 million. This brings their total investment to about $50 million. Realtor's machine is called a magnetic mirror. That's a cylindrical device with magnets along its length and very strong magnets at either end. These strong magnets at the end cause particles to reflect back towards the center. That confines them long enough for them to fuse, which releases the energy. Now, as a fun fact, the US government made major investments into magnetic mirrors back during the 1970s and the 1980s, including a huge mirror machine at Lawrence Livermore called MFTF, the Mirror Fusion Test Facility. That machine was bigger than a 747, and the project got canceled on the same day it was completed. So it was never even turned on. Since that time, a lot has happened with magnetic mirrors. New theory showed that it was possible to make symmetric magnetic mirrors as opposed to the asymmetric MFTS. And Russia kept experimenting with mirrors this whole time throughout the 80s, 90s, all the way up till today. They made really important theoretical and experimental discoveries. And finally, new high temperature superconductors were invented called Rebco. Due to these advances, the tech was revived in the USA by scientists from the University of Wisconsin, and they started real to fusion. Realta is targeting the mid-2030s to put fusion energy on the grid. And this new investment will allow them to grow their team and speed up their progress. So wish them luck. But here are some bonus stories that you can read on your own. First, in a story from The Cooldown, the French government is investing $53 million to develop high-temperature superconductors that can work at over 80 Kelvin. This is close to the performance of Rebco, which are the state-of-the-art right now. But France wants to make superconductors independently. And finally, from Japan news, 10 billion yen is being invested by Japan to speed up their research into nuclear fusion. That money will purchase equipment for experiments and diagnostics, and their private companies in Japan will be able to use that equipment so they can go as fast as possible. So it seems like the whole world is ramping up their efforts on fusion energy. That's all I have for today. If you liked this, remember to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Fusion News.